don't you do it in the house? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Spirit of God, heal people, deliver people. Make a way in this uncertain time. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Touch us, Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I just bless your name. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Ooh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just bless you, Lord. I just thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy, 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 holy is the Lamb. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. The Spirit of God is here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank you, Jesus. I bless your name. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you for visiting us tonight, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for visiting us. Hallelujah. Lord God, I just bless you. Holy, holy, holy. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I bless your name. I bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Lord God, I bless you. I just thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing. I worship you, Lord. I worship you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're worthy, Lord God. You're worthy. I bless you, God. I bless you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Holy, 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 holy. Thank you, God, for your spirit that's moving in the house. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for love. Thank you, God, for forgiveness. Thank you, God, for grace. Thank you, God, for mercy. Thank you, God, Lord God, for healing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. One more time, let's just thank God for the moving of the Spirit. Lord, I just thank you right now for the moving of the Spirit. I thank you, God, for what you've done in this house. I thank you for healing. I thank you, God, that you let your presence come down and kiss the earth in this house. Lord God, and I just thank you that you're still our God. You're still our healer. You're still our way maker. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Kids, you can go back to your youth leaders. Children can go back with their youth leaders. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank all those that in the age group of 10 and up can go back. Age group of 10 and up, go back. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. As they are going... As they're going, we're so glad to have them, have our youth group. And all of y'all that's here, hallelujah, I'm thankful for those that are here. I'm thankful for those who are watching online, hallelujah. Let's give our online audience a hand clap, a hand clap. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to preach. I'm not going to preach long, but I am going to preach. Uh, pay attention if you're online or you're here. We're going to have some, some things in place in case, the, um, in case the thing changes. We will have multiple services in case the amount of people change that we can, vi that we can gather together. We, we want to still have church, and we wanna, but we don't want to be rebellious, okay? Um, we want to we wanna get along with our officials as best we can. But we're not going to give up our religious freedom to worship. We're not going to give it up. If we've got to change 
If we've got to change ourselves the way that we meet, we can change that. Uh, if that's a problem, we can change that. We'll make it work. Just pay attention to your Facebook, but we will continually worship God, all right? We will continually do what the Bible says in Hebrews 25. that says, don't forsake the assembly of yourselves together. Uh, we might not be all assembling in the same place, but we're going to be assembling, all right? We, we're going to be assembling and meeting, and, and, we're, and it says, and if you go ahead and read the rest of that scripture, and I'm par a paraphrase, and I'm not quoting verbatim, but it says, when you see the signs of the times, basically, do it even more. Okay, so there's turmoil in the world, so we need to do it more, not less. And uh, we're going to make a way so that you can do that and still be compliant. And uh, we just believe that God will help us, all right? So if it's a little different than what you're used to, don't get nervous. We'll make it work, all right? I never was a, a man that liked to play inside the lines anyway. And so we will change tradition. And we will be the non, which we already are, but we're the non-traditional church anyway. And uh, we just believe that we're a Jesus sitter where anybody can come. Doesn't matter what your religion is, and you can worship God with us in spirit and in truth. Amen? I'm going to go back to the series that I've been in for the next last few weeks. You will get through this. It just kind of blows my mind that God had me already for the last nine weeks, this is week number nine, preaching a series, you will get through this. God's just a timely God. He knew we were going to be dealing with what we were going to be dealing with before, before I ever started the series, and he let that move into my life and speak into my life. And, and I don't know about you, but I consider that a major prophetic word from God to even be talking about this, and this is week number nine before we ever heard about what this could happen here. Genesis 41, I'm still, in the, I'm still in the Joseph story. Genesis 41, 50 through 52. But the name of part nine is, just to help you, you don't have to switch back, Sister Charlie, until uh, I get through with the Scriptures. The name of this number nine is, please have gratitude with that attitude. Please have gratitude with that attitude. All right, Genesis 41, 50 through 52, King James Version. And unto Joseph were born two sons before the years of famine, which Anessa, I probably said it wrong, but that's okay, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On, bare unto him. Verse 51, and Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh, for God, said he, hath made me forget all my toll and all my father's house. I want you to just think about that, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to enlighten you a little bit on that. Verse 52, and the name of the second he called he Ephraim, for God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. Let me just tell you like this. God will bless you right in the middle of a coronavirus problem. He'll bless his people. All right. Psalms 91, I read this on Sunday morning. I'm reading it again or on Sunday night. Psalms 91, I'm only going through verse 10 this time. New Living Translation, those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I just want to help somebody. If you will rely on Jesus, he's going to take care of you. Verse 2, this I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust him. Somebody needs to decide that he's your God. He's not your mama, your daddies, your auntie, your uncles, but he's my God. Verse 3, for he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from every What is coronavirus? It's a deadly disease, but he says, I will protect you from every deadly disease. Verse 4, he will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. What's one of them? He said, by my stripes ye were healed. 
If you get it, guess what? You'll be healed of it because he said the deadly disease will not kill you. I'm just saying what the Word says. Verse 5, do not be afraid of the terrors of the night. What is coronavirus? Nor the error that flies in the day. Verse 6, <laughs> do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Verse 7, though a thousand fall at your side, though 10,000 are dying around you. This kind of opens up your thought processes a little bit, don't it? We got thousands and thousands dying around us. Though that happens, this evil will not touch you. How many believe the Word of God? You need to start to believe it in the middle of this conflict. Verse 8, just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. Verse 9. Verse 9, if you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter. I like verse 10. No evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home. In this time, this trying time, <coughs> somebody needs to let the Word of the Lord be in your soul. Ephesians 5, Ephesians 5, 19 and 20. Ephesians 5, this is the New Testament, King James Version. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. What do you do when you get in a problem? Start worshiping. Start singing. Verse 20, give thanks always. For all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Another set of scriptures, Philippians 4. Philippians 4, 6 and 7, New Living Translation. I love this part of scripture. I read it all the time. Just depends on what version you're reading. But don't worry about anything. Who's been worrying? Be honest. We all have a, just a little worry. But he says, don't worry about nothing. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Verse 7, if you'll do that, then you will experience this, God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. One more scripture. It'll be here until the end of coronavirus in every one of my sermons. 2 Timothy 1 and 7, King James Version. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. God has not given you what you've been fearing. You're doing it to yourself. I want us to pray and God to help me with, please have gratitude with that attitude. Lord Jesus, we come to you one more time. We ask you, God, not only for your anointing, but open up every man and woman's mind and their thoughts to accept the word of the Lord. Help us, Lord God, decide that we are going to be thankful and move forward in all that we do. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. amen. You may be seated. Please have gratitude with that attitude. We, um, We, we have a bad problem in America, probably everywhere, but we have an attitude about everything. We get mad at this one, and we get mad at that one. We, we talk about sister so-and-so and brother so-and-so. We talk about the boss. We talk about that. But you know what? We got to get to the point that we get an attitude of gratitude. The Bible says in many places, but a couple of them, it says that cursing and blessing shouldn't come out of the same mouth. It also says that bitter and sweet water shouldn't come out of the same spring. But yet, as Christians, we forget sometimes who our God is. And we forget sometimes and we start naming names and calling this and that and, and talking stuff. And it reminds me of what I read you here in Genesis. 
But before I do, you know I always like to throw a funny, and I'm going to throw a funny out. This is a true funny. I, I, I'm going to throw a true funny out that I read, and I just couldn't help it. He should have been Boudreaux, but he wasn't. But there was a governor of Texas in the late 1800s from 1891 to 1895. He was governor. You can go look him up. His name was Jimmy Hogg. Jimmy Hogg. But, but Jimmy Hogg probably wouldn't have made a splash on the governorship except he had a daughter. And Sister Linda, don't get mad at me. It's true. He had a daughter. And he named her I'm a hog. I'm a hog. Who would name their daughter? I am a. I'm a hog. She had a sister. And they say that this is part, is some rumor, some truth. And her name was Yura. You knew it. You're a hog. And when I read that, I just about died because we do the same things to ourselves. We put labels and we put names on ourselves that just really don't make no sense. And we walk around with a bad attitude because we name the bad attitude bad attitude. We, we get angry and we fear. And because we fear, we lose our attitude of being thankful and being gra and, and, and gratitude to God. And we pick up an attitude. And we let that attitude shape our character. And our character becomes whatever our attitude is. If, if you believe every time somebody puts you down that you're no good, pretty soon you're going to name yourself, I'm no good, Snyder. Or I'm no good, McClellan. Or I'm no good, LaBeouf. You will allow people to put names on you. So quickly going in my sermon, we read that Joseph named his first son Manasseh. And, and, and what is so cool about this is Joseph named the kid Manasseh for a reason. His wife, she probably wanted to name him uh, Max or Maximum. She was a, she was an Egyptian, but he had got brought there and got sold in there. And, and so he wasn't. She would have wanted to put a big kingly name on the son, but not, not Joseph. Joseph said, I am naming him Manasseh, which means God help me forget my trouble. Amen. I want you to get this. God made me forget. That was what his name meant. And I just want to help you just a minute. Some of you need to start naming the trouble in your life. God made me forget my trouble. Some of you need to start naming the things that people has put on you that you've accepted. And you need to get an attitude of gratitude instead of an attitude of, I'll never make it through. Right now, in the middle of our turmoil of the coronavirus, we've got churches all over the place. We've got them, and they ought to be able to work out their services. And I'll probably get a few calls. It's okay. But... But they ought to open their services up, even if you get down to just having a few people that the, that the law says we can have. Make it work. I don't care how much work it's going to take me as pastor to make it come. And we're going to get together with some of the people here uh, before the weekend is through. And we're going to lay out plans in case it happens. Because I believe the church should be prepared. I believe the church should be prepared to have their doors open for the hurting. To have their doors open for those. In the middle of this turmoil, there is great revival that's coming. In the middle of this turmoil, there's people that are lost right now, and they're going to be without hope. I, I talked to somebody today, just let me help you like this. If you're really honest with yourself, when you go to the store and there's no meat on the shelves and there's no toilet paper, who would have ever dreamed? If you'd have just, if you'd have just, if I'd have known, I'd have bought stock. I'd have bought stock in Charmin. I'd have bought all I had if I'd have known, but I didn't know. I bought stock in, in some hand soap, some sanitizer, stuff, if I'd have just known, but I didn't know. You see, but we now are facing dilemmas we've never felt faced as a country or as a world. 
And you can decide to let this turmoil shape you. You can decide to let this fear name you. You can decide to say, you know what? I'm going to act like a hermit, and I'm not going to do nothing. I understand that we don't need to act like we used to act. We need to take care of our elderly. We need to take care of that. But we also need to take care of our soul, and we need to be about the business. Father, and whenever we come out of this, and we will come out of this, we want that to be left right where it came from. We don't want it to come and have a name attached to us that said I was a fear, that says I was nervous, that says I, I hurt people in the process to get what I wanted. i become a hoarder. Now I'm a hoarder. I, I've done the stuff that I shouldn't have done. I, I took the love out of it, and I beat the lady up in the aisle over the pork chop, and, and I... All of that stuff will follow you. It will name you. But you need to start naming in the middle of the turmoil some good stuff. You need to start calling yourself, I'm a prayer warrior. You need to say, I, I'm a worshiper. You need to say, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm believing that God really is my ever-present help in time of trouble. You need to say, you know what? He really is my refuge. I, 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 I believe. You need to start naming some stuff for God. You say, how do you do that? David said, I encourage myself in the Lord. What you need to do is if you ever were sick and you really think that this, this virus might get you, you need to remember when God healed you. And you need to start testifying it to yourself in the middle of the mirror and say, you know what, devil? You might give me that, but God healed me from this in 1992 and in 2019 God healed me for this and because he healed me for that devil I'm not going to fear coronavirus I'm going to do all I can to protect myself but you know what I'm not going to let it name me I'm not going to let it cause me fear I'm not going to let it cause me turmoil I'm not going to let it cause me those things because in the middle of this you will lose your mind if, if, think about somebody that don't know God like everybody in this room knows God. What kind of fear are they living in today? What kind of fear are they living in? And, and this is where Joseph was. Joseph could have let the fear of the fact and the angry, the anger of the fact that his daddy, uh, his, not his daddy, but his brothers sold him into slavery. He could have let the angry of that, that God himself, most of us get mad at God in situations like this. Let's be honest. Or other situations you're going through right now. It might be a divorce. It might be a loss of a job. It, it might be, it might be uh, the loss of a loved one that you think God took too quick. Whatever the fear is, you get mad at God. But what you're supposed to do, I read you the scripture, was run to him because he's your refuge. But we do the wrong thing. We go, you know what, God, I'm fired up. God, I'm mad. And we push God way over here. It's not what Joseph done. Joseph said, I'm naming my son to let me remember that God let me forget the hell that I dealt with in my life. Some of you need to start to name something in your life that says, God, let me forget where I came from. He made it as if I don't even have to remember it. What are you saying, Pastor? The, the, act, the addict that you was, you're going to look back. I'm prophesying to somebody right now. Within the next three years, you're going to look back and forget the fact that you ever had a problem with an addiction. You're going to look back in your life, and you're not even going to see that person in the mirror. You're going to go, how did I ever get there? I don't even know. That wasn't even me. Woo! I'm speaking it right now. You're not even going to understand how you was that man or woman in the mirror because you're going to be so blessed. That leads me to the second th name of, of Joseph's son. The second name was Ephraim, and Ephraim was that God blessed me and made me fruitful in the middle of my problem. I come to tell somebody tonight, in the middle of coronavirus, we're going to have revival. In the middle, in the middle of, of your sickness, God's going to heal you. In the middle of your addiction, He's going to bring you out of your addiction. In the middle of your divorce, God's going to give you favor. I want somebody to get in your spirit because He said, God multiplied me when I shouldn't have been multiplied. In captivity, God blessed him. Hey, he was a slave and God blessed him. God blessed him.
him in the prison. God blessed him at Potiphar's house. God blessed him whenever the king took him out. He said, in the middle of my turn. Somebody got to get this. In the middle of your problem, in the middle of your chaos, in the middle of your... God's going to bless you right there. God is not going to worry about. God's not going to worry about where you're at. He's going to bless you right where you're at. You will get through this. Holy Ghost, you will get through this. You will get through this. But you've got to believe you're going to get through it. Your mindset is, you will get through this. Tim, bro, if you do it, I'm going to follow you. But, but you will get through this. But you got to get it down in your heart, in your spirit. you got to start naming stuff in your life. you got to start naming stuff in your life. You want to be free? Start acting like you're free. And, and, and this is what he said. He said, I'm going to praise God no matter what's going on. Because not only has God made me forget, he, he even hey, he went a little further. I'm going to mess your head up right here. The first part of that scripture, you can go back and read it in 51. He said, God made me forget my trouble. Then he said, God even made me forget my father's house. And how is that significant? Because he really loved his father. His father made him the coat of many colors. But even that memory, he even forgot that memory so that he didn't long for the father's house. God's going to take the stuff that you think you have to have. And he's going to take that out of your life. And when you look back, it's going to be like it never happened. The stuff that you long for in your life, he's even going to take that out. And he's going to replace it with love. He's going to replace it with peace. The path is all understanding. The thing that you wished you hadn't have done or you wished you hadn't have had to go through, God said, I'm going to make you forget the memory of that. And that's why he named Manasseh. He named Manasseh. God made me forget my past. And God made me forget my trouble that I'm in right now. I told that because that's very important to you getting past the coronavirus, to getting past your addiction, to getting past your lost job. You're a very uncertain term right now. We don't, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. But I'm telling you, God has got us in the palm of his hand. The Bible says your name is tattooed right there in the palm of his hand. That's what the Bible says. And so because of that, you got to believe that. you got to get the power to do it. But you need to be thankful. You need to have an attitude of gratitude with that attitude. You need to quit being just blow up, blowed up, and you start being thankful. Let me just help you this way. Even in Bible times, we know nine out of ten people are not thankful. Let me just help you. Luke 17, about a verse 11 through 18. We find ten lepers. They came around a corner, and they seen Jesus. They said, Jesus, heal us. He said, Go that way. They had enough faith to start going toward the priest because that's who spoke them clean. They weren't healed yet, but they had enough faith to move toward that. But they didn't have enough faith to come back. And here's why. The minute that, and I want you to be careful of this. Only one come back, so that's where my nine out of ten came from. Nine out of ten were grateful. One was grateful out of ten. So sitting in here, you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One of you is grateful. The rest of you are not. But when God starts to bless you, be grateful because he will. In the middle of your trouble, in the middle of your turmoil, he's going to bless you because the word says so. And I just believe it. I've been feeling it in the spirit. God is not going to let you go too far that he don't bless you and bring you out of stuff. You know how I know? Because of the story I told you just a little while ago about my friend. God brought him from a mighty long way. And, and, and I told him, I told him, one day you're going to walk in that door, and I'm going to hand you that microphone. And when I do, and you start telling your testimony, all of a sudden the presence of God is going to hit you like it ain't never hit you before. I'm telling you that right now. Some of you, some of you, God is about to use you in the middle of this chaos. You don't even have an idea what God spoke to me today. I'm going to speak to some people about it this week. 
God spoke to me some stuff, and just in case they have to drop us down below this 50 mark, I believe that God is about to turn some of you loose in ministry like you've never even dreamed about, and, and we're going to see God move in, in, in an in a awesome way, a deep way, and, and we're going to affect people's lives, and God is going to do it, and, and I just believe that. But uh, quickly going through this, the one guy that came back, God made him whole. Jesus said, be whole, and he, so his finger grew back. It just didn't get, the others just got their self clean, but they still had, they still had markings of the leprosy, even though they were clean. There's reasons for that. When God starts to bless you, don't forget where your blessings came from. God's going to bless you in the middle of this chaos. That's what I come to tell you tonight, but don't forget where they came from. You see, I believe some of them were just too excited to get home to mama and the kids that they couldn't go back and tell him, thank you. And some, they was too embarrassed of the fact that they had leprosy. Some of you are embarrassed of your past. Don't be. Because, because you got a past, you have a future today because Jesus Christ touched you. Some of them. Some of them didn't come back because they were just ready to go do life. When God blesses you, don't leave the church that way. This is a warning in this, in this sermon. Blessing is coming to the people of God because it says if you hide yourself in him, he's going he's to give you blessing. But, but don't forget where your blessing come from. Don't forget because if you'll come back and thank him in the middle of your attitude, if you'll get gratitude, in the middle of all being worried, your attitude right now is we don't know what's happening to our family. When it's bad, when I can't even buy toilet paper, that's what you're saying. And I understand you and I'm with you. But what you need to say is, Lord, I'm thankful. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. Doesn't matter that there's coronavirus. Doesn't matter that you're in the middle of divorce. Doesn't matter that your spouse left. Doesn't matter you don't have enough finances to make it to the end of the week. I'm going to rejoice in God. How do I rejoice? I start to praise him. I start to worship him. I promise it will change your mind. I promise it will change your attitude. Whenever I got out of my box, and Philip is, a, is one of my witnesses here, but when I got out of my box, things started to change. Whenever I decided to start worshiping, God, because of who God was, not because of my righteousness. All of a sudden, God started to move in a mighty, mighty way in my life. All of a sudden, I could take that step out of the box and say, you know what, God? You've called me to do a work, and I'll do it. God, you called me to do this, and I'll do it. But some of us are so wrapped up in condemnation and guilt from our past, we don't think God will use us at all. And I want to tell you, that's not a reason not to have gratitude. You need to thank God every day. You know what? I beat this addiction in my life. I might not have beat it, but this might be day 10. But thank you, God, for day 10. Because if I got 10 days, I can have 11. And if I got 12 days, I can have 13. And if I got 14 days, I can have 15. Somebody needs to understand. It's a day-by-day -day walk with God. But you got to be thankful. Have an attitude of gratitude with your attitude. Because we can get there and get poor in the mouth. We can talk about all the crazy stuff. We can act like we're crazy. But you don't know, understand, Pastor, fighting this right here. I just can't put the bottle down. I just can't get past this. I can't get past that. Yes, you can. All you need to do is say, Jesus, help me today. You need to learn how to pray. I was talking to my bishop, my pastor, Bishop Nugent, this week about what to do and which way to go. And Bishop Nugent said, son, right now is the time that if a preacher prays, God will speak to him. He said, that's not only that. He said, he said, if the people of God would pray. He said, what's the scripture? And I said, seek ye first. He said, that's right. He said, tell the people tonight, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and he will add what? He had healing from the coronavirus. He will add healing to the finances. He will add healing to the addiction. <coughs> he will add healing from a divorce. I want somebody to understand that he will heal your broken heart. Let's all stand. He will heal your broken heart. I, I got more, but I'm done. You need to start to say, 
God's going to make me forget this. You need to go ahead and start uh, uh, prophesying it to yourself. God's going to make me forget the coronavirus. God's going to make me forget the loss of the job. God's going to make me forget that spouse that didn't want to come along with me on the ride. But God's going to make me forget. And if you lost a loved one tonight, God's going to make you forget that. Not them, but he's going to make you forget the pain so that you can move on in your life. I'm speaking to somebody right now. You might be online. But there's some pain for leaving a lo- losing a loved one. But if you can trust God, he's going to let you forget the pain and only remember the good times in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Please <coughs> have an attitude of gratitude instead of just having an attitude. The name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I want you not to be busy worrying tonight of the economy. I want you to quit worrying about the economy, quit worrying about your job, quit worrying about your addiction, quit worrying about getting the coronavirus. But I want you to encourage yourself in the Lord that He really is your provider, that He really is your way maker, that He really is your help in present trouble. That he really is everything the Bible says he is. That God is still God. And like I said Sunday night, he's the same God. He's the same God for Abraham. He's the same God for Isaac. He's the same God for Peter. He's the same God for James. And guess what? He's the same God for Don. For Tim. For Webb. For Leroy. Claude. Philip, Chad, Amanda, Jessica, Emma. He's going to be the same God when you go to the surgery that he was the last time. He's going to protect you. He's the same God. Brother Jimmy J, if you're watching today, it's the same God. Sister Pat, if you're watching, he's the same God. He's the healer. Buster, if you're watching, he's your healer. You're coming out of that hospital room. Healed, delivered, and set free in Jesus' name. If anybody would like prayer, the ministry team will meet you down here. I want you to come and let them pray over you if you have a need. Because we believe that God answers all prayer. But I want you to tomorrow to start being thankful. Be thankful that the fact that you're breathing air. Be thankful for the fact that God's got you. Be thankful for all the small things as well as the Lord things. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. Thank you, Lord. I just want to. If you're watching online tonight, just start to thank God right there in your house or where you're at. Just say, Lord, I just thank you. I just thank you right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord God, that you're going to see me through coronavirus. You're going to see me through loss of job, loss of wages. Lord God, you're going to protect my family and keep your hand on them. I believe it in Jesus' name. I just believe that God will protect you. Just say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for life. And I will rejoice just because it's your day. In Jesus' name. Thank you for being with us. We'll be live again on Sunday. Just check us out. We're glad you're with us. God bless you in Jesus' name.